Hi, in this video we'll be taking a look at multiple different topics for year 7, year 6 and I think some year 8 topics looking at fraction, percentages, probability sets, primes, proofs and even like linear graphs okay towards the end okay this is from the white rose maths worksheet which are really good resource for key stage one key stage two and even key stage three and gcse maths okay so feel free to check them out guys we're gonna start with question number one year seven sets and probability here are some cards with letters on so i've got the word summer Okay, Lily picks one card at random from the cards shown. What's the probability that she picks an E? Well, there's one E out of a possible six cards. So the fraction is just one out of six. Okay, and that's my answer for that question. The next question, what's the probability that she picks an M? Well, there are two M's here, so it's going to be two out of six. And for those of you that want to simplify, then I can cancel top and bottom by dividing by two, and I get one third. Okay, so the answer to the second one is two sixths or one third. Okay, but we do not have to worry like, a lot about simplifying it. The next one, what's the probability that she does not pick an S? Well, there's one S here, so the probability that it's, it's an S is one sixth. Therefore, not a probability that it's an S will be five sixth, because probability has to always add to give me the whole number one. Okay, probability goes from zero to one. Okay, it can't ever be more than 100% or one whole. This is question number two, guys. Match the set to their descriptions. I've got set A, which is numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Set B is 1, 2, 4, 8. And set C, which is 4, 8. So multiples of 4. Well, that's going to be this one here. Okay, so it's the 4 times tables. Okay, even numbers is going to be this one, okay, because it can't be the first one because it's got an odd number. And technically, you could argue that set C is also even numbers as well, okay, but it's not counting all the even numbers, so I'm being a bit more specific here. And the last one, all the factors of 8, well, factors means numbers that go into it. 1, 2, 4, and 8 are all factors of 8, because they go into the number 8 with no remainder. This is question number 3, guys. I've got this epsilon, so this is, is the epsilon, so the, the notation for the word epsilon. List the elements of the sets. Okay, so set B is looking at all this here, is the numbers 2 six and nine okay because they are all the numbers that are inside circle b this one says a intersection b so a and b well that's the intersection and the intersection of a and b is just two okay because it's the bit that overlaps the two circles this is question number four, guys. The table shows the eye colour of a group of 30 students. Okay, so eye colour, number of students, blue, brown and green. Number of students, 14, 10 and 6. What is the probability that a student chosen at random has brown eyes? Well, brown is going to be 10 out of a total of 30, okay? Because we are told in the question, it's a group of 30. So 10 out of 30... Which I thought, if I want to simplify that, it goes to one third. Okay, dividing top and bottom by ten. Okay, the answer is that. Okay, in the exam, guys, I wouldn't put down that like, both fractions. I would just put down one fraction. But I'm just simplifying it in the context that I can simplify some fractions down. Okay, into their lowest components. Okay. What's the probability that a student chosen at random does not have blue eyes? Well, 14 students have blue eyes, therefore 10 plus 6 is 16 out of 30. So 16 out of 30 do not have blue eyes. Okay, they have brown or green eyes. Okay, which again simplifies to 8 fifteenths. Oops, should be a 1 there, guys. 
Apologies for that. Okay, that's my answer for that question. This is question number five, guys. Okay, so I've got the epsilon set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A is my odd numbers, B is multiples of three. So I've got to complete the Venn diagram to show the information. Okay, so set A is odd numbers. So one is an odd number and it's not a multiple of three. Three is an odd number, but it's also a multiple of three. So I can put three there. Okay, 2 is an even number, and it's not a multiple of 3, so I can put it there. Okay, number 4. 4, again, is an even number, so it's not neither odd or multiple of 3. 5 is an odd number, but it's not a multiple of 3. 6 is an even number, but it is a multiple of 3, so it goes in set B. And 7 is an odd number, but it's not a multiple of 3. Okay, which numbers are in the set elements A and B? So this is A intersection B. So remember that the overlap means the intersection. So which numbers? Well, the number is just 3. Okay, because that's the only one that is an odd number and a multiple of 3. Okay, multiple of 3 means the 3 times table, guys. This is question number six, guys. Callum picks a counter at random from a bag of red, blue, yellow, and green counters. What is the probability of picking a red or a green counter? When you hear the word or in maths, then I add the probabilities together. So 0.3 add 0.1 is 0.4. So the answer for that one is 0.4. Okay, what's the probability of picking a yellow? Well, probability has to add up to give me 1. 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4 is 0 0.7. 0 0.8. 0 0.8 add 0 0.2 gives me the whole number 1. Okay, because probability has to always add to give me 1. This is question number 7, guys. Statement A is marked with a probability scale. Uh, on the probability scale, mark the statements B, C, and D onto the probability scale. So I've got A, I've got B, C, D. Okay, so A, the probability of getting a four on a fair sided, uh, on a fair spinner with numbers one to four, so that's a quarter, yep. That's spot on. The probability that tomorrow will be a Sunday. Well, Sunday appears once out of seven days. Okay, so one seventh. I would say is somewhere around here, okay, roughly, okay, the probability of getting the heads when you toss a fair coin, well, that's an even chance because you've got heads and tails, so the outcome is two possible outcomes, the probability of getting a red counter at random out of a bag of 20 red counters well that's going to be certain which is a hundred percent or one whole okay so the epsilon is integers one to ten y is equal to one two three six and nine list the elements in the complement of y okay so I'm not 100% sure what it means by complement of y, actually, but I'm assuming, okay, let's just draw a little sketch here. So this is going to be letter y. So y is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 6, and 9. The rest of the numbers are going to appear on outside of the box. So 4, 5, 7, 8, and 10. Now, I think the word complement means everything that is not included in Y, I think. Okay, so it's going to be all these numbers. So it's going to be 4, 5, Seven, eight, and ten. Okay, they are all the numbers that don't lie 
in set Y. Okay, so complement means the opposite of that. Okay, so Y dash we say or Y primed. Right, guys, so we are now looking at Year 7 Fractions and Percentages, okay? We're going to start with question number 1. Work out the calculations. We may use a bar model to help us with this. A half of 60. So a half of 60 means dividing it by 2, okay? So splitting it into halves, into 2 equal pieces. 60 divided by 2 is 30 so a half of 60 guys is equal to 30 okay because remember a half of something means divided by 2 okay so that was fairly straightforward the next one 3 fifths of 25 well the way this works guys is I divide by the bottom and times by the top so 25 divided by 5 is 5 so 5 is equal equal to one fifth i want three fifths so i'm going to multiply that by three okay and i get 15. okay if you imagine that each bit here represents a five okay split it into fifths and i want three fifths so i'll do five plus five plus five which is 15. and here that's going to be 30 that's going to be 30 for that question. Okay, next question, guys. 5 sixths of 24. Well, again, splitting 24 into 6 pieces to work out what 1 piece is. So divide by the bottom times by the top. 24 divided by 6 is 4. Times that by 5. And I get the answer of 20. Okay, so the answer is equal to 20, guys. Okay. This is question number two, guys. Whitney has £12 pocket money. She spends 50% of her pocket money on magazines. She spends 33 and a third of her pocket money on apps. How much pocket money does she have left? Show the steps in your working. Okay. So 50% of £12 means that I divide it by two okay 50 percent is the equivalent to a half so divide it by two and i get six pounds okay 33 and a third guys now that one's not so straightforward actually but that one's essentially taking a third of something 33 and a third percent means dividing it by three essentially okay so dividing that by three and I get four pounds. Okay, so dividing that by three. Okay, so let's just put on the side here what I've what I've done stepwise. I divided that by two and I divided this by three. Okay, because fifty percent is same as half, and thirty-three and a third percent is same as taking a third of something. Six plus four is ten pound. Okay, so how much does she have left? So she has £2 remaining. Okay. That's my answer for that question, guys. This is question number three, guys. Dexter is thinking of a number. One third of Dexter's number is 12. What number is Dexter thinking of? Well, this one's actually working backwards. A third of something is 12. So therefore... The opposite of doing a third something is to times it by 3. So if I do 12 times 3, that's the opposite of doing the opposite to a third, essentially. Which gives me the answer of 36. Okay, And I can go ahead and check my answer, because a third of 36 means 36 divided by 3, which is 12. Okay? So this was actually working backwards, actually. So th these questions is actually dividing by the top times it by the bottom. Okay, which is which is the opposite of what I said here, okay? Alex is thinking of a number. Two thirds of the number is six. What number is Alex thinking of? Okay, so two thirds of x is equal to six. Okay, so the reverse process here, guys. I do six divided by the top, which is three, times by the bottom, which is nine. Okay, and I can check my answer 
two thirds of nine, nine divided by three is three, times divided by two is indeed six. So that is correct. So, so for question three, guys, just to be very explicitly clear, I've divided by, sorry, I've, yeah, yeah, I've divided by the numerator times by the denominator for this question, whereas the question one is dividing by the denominator times by the numerator. Right, guys, this is question number four. Work out 35% of 80. So this is like a percentage of an amount question. So I'm going to go ahead, actually, and work out what 10% is. So to find out 10%, actually, it's obviously fairly straightforward. I just divide my answer by 10. 80 divided by 10 is 8. I'm now going to work out what 5% is. Okay. Okay. Which is going to be half of 10%, which is equal to 4. I want 30%, so I want 3 lots of this. Okay. So 8 threes are 24. 24 add the 4. Okay, showing our full workings here, guys, is equal to 28. Okay. So 35% of 80 is equal to 28. And this is looking at a percentage of an amount. Take the cards that show the that show show the keys to press to work up 35% of 80 on a calculator. Well it's not this one actually. It's not this one either. Okay. So it is actually going to be this one because 35% as a decimal is 0 0.35 and it's also the same as this one. Okay, this is just what we call commutative actually so I can just swap the numbers around but it's still going to give me the same answer. So the bottom two are correct. Okay, match the cards of equal value. Okay, so let's work this out actually yeah, separately. 3 fifths of 20. So 20 divided by 5 is 4 times by 3 is 12. Okay, 9 tenths of 20. 20 divided by 10 is 2 times 9 is 18. 3 quarters of 100 is equal to 75. Okay, divide by the bottom times by the top. Divide by the bottom times by the top. That, that's going to be 12. 72 divided by 6 is 12 times 5 is 60. Okay. Some of these I actually know actually. So this one's going to match with this one. Okay. Because 10% of 40 is 4 times by 3 is 12. Okay. That's going to be 18. So that one's going to match with this one. Okay, 25% actually of 300 actually, so that's a quarter of 300 actually, which is equal to 75. So that one's going to go there. And I'm assuming that this one should be with this one, because that's two-thirds of 90. Okay, and two-thirds of 90... Is indeed 60. Yeah, sorry, I I'll, I'll, I'll just obviously working out of my head, guys. I do apologise. Okay. <clears throat> this is question number six, guys. Teddy works out 4% of £23.89 in this calculator. The calculator shows 0 0.9556. Write down the value of 4% of £23.89, correct to the nearest penny. Well, that's going to be the cutoff point. It's going to be here. So it's going to be 0 0.96 of a pound or 96 pence. Because the 5 after... So the 5 here bumps it up actually, so it rounds up 95 to 96, so then I get 0 0.96. Okay, this is question number 7 guys, it's, it's got the H there because it's for like higher tier students, so it's for students that are trying to push themselves, okay, for these. Which of these cards is greater in value? Justify your answer. 140% of 90, or 11 fifths of 60. Well, divide by the bottom, I get 12. 12 times 11, I believe, is 132. Because 12 tens are 120, and 12 is 132. This one, if I do 14 times 9, that will give me my answer. Well, 14 times 10 is 140. Subtract 14, 
is 126. So which is greater? Well, 11 fifths of 60. Okay. So this is looking at like a increase of an amount of share or, or percent, yeah, a, a fraction increase or a percentage increase, which is what we will look at in like the later videos. This is question number eight, guys. Work out 62 Six sixty and two thirty percent actually of nine sevenths of nine four hundred twenty pounds. Well, let's just do actually bit by bit. So let's work out this part first. Four hundred twenty divided by seven is six sixty. Sixty times nine is five hundred forty. Okay, so that's the answer for this first part. Divide by the bottom times by the top. Okay, here this is equivalent to two thirds. 540 divided by 3 is 180 times by 2 is 360 okay now i haven't actually shown my full workings yet and i do actually apologize for that but hopefully you were able yeah to obviously pause here and use like the bus stop method okay to like check your answers okay um but that's how i got my answer for that one right guys we are now looking at year seven primes and proof okay so question number one from the numbers in the box write down a factor of 16 so a factor means a number that goes into it the number four is a factor of 16 because four fours are 16 a multiple of six so that's a six times table i should recognize that 30 is a multiple of six because six fives are 30. The next question, a factor of 63 and a multiple of 7. Well, that's actually going to be 21, okay? Because that's a factor of 63, actually, because 21 times 3 is 63, and 7 times 3 is 21. An odd number that is greater than 30, well, that's going to be 37, okay? Odd numbers end in 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. This is question number two, guys. Match the sequence to its name. Two, three, five, seven. Okay, that one's gonna be prime numbers. One, four, nine, six, and eight. So they're, they're, they're actually square numbers because one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is eight, sixteen is eight, etc., etc. Meaning that one, three, six, and ten are what are called triangular numbers. This is question number three, guys. Write down a prime number between 40 and 50. Well, 41 is a prime number because it only has two factors. So the definition of a prime number is it has two factors only, one in itself. This is question number four. What's the highest common factor of 16 and 36? So it's the highest number that goes into both numbers. Okay, now, the answer I get, actually, is equal to 4, okay? Because 4 times 4 is 16, actually, and 4 times 9 is equal to 36. And there's no other number that is higher than that, actually, that is a factor of both, okay? Okay, next question. Explain why 2x is a common factor of the three expressions below. Okay, so I can split this into what I call its factor trees. So... That's equal to 2x times 2x, right? This one's equal to 2x times 4y. Okay, this one's going to be 2x and 3w. Okay, now we can clearly see actually that there is a 2x in every single component of each tree. Therefore, 2x is a common factor of these expressions, okay? This is question number five, guys. Two lights flash together. The red light flashes every eight seconds. The blue light flashes every six seconds. All together, how many seconds will the lights flash again? Actually, okay, so this, so this is looking at lowest common multiple. So looking at our times table, actually. So we're going to look at our six and eight times table and find the first number that is common in both. Okay, so let's do that five for this one okay you're gonna have six twelve 
18, 24 and 30, we can see that 24 lies in both. So it will flash again 24 seconds later together. Okay, so this is what I call lowest common multiple. Question six, guys. When you add two prime numbers, the total is always even. Give an example to show that this is false. Okay, well, two is a prime number, three is a prime number, so two plus three is equal to five, and five is not even. Right, guys, this is the next question. The sum of two consecutive integers is odd. Give an example to show that that is true. Okay, so what it's saying is, if I have like the number one add three, let's say, or three add five. So the sum of two consecutive, yeah, integers yeah, is odd, actually, sorry. So what it's saying is, yeah, so like one plus two, let's say, Okay, so consecutive means that it follows, like, the number line, actually, okay, so it follows, like, the integer, like, number line, okay, 3 is odd. Okay, next question, show that there are exactly 3 square numbers between 20 and 50, well, 25 is equal to 5 squared, 36 is equal to 6 squared, and 49 is equal to 7 squared, okay. This is question number seven, guys. Express 72 as a product of its prime factors. So this is decomposing it into its prime numbers times together. Okay, two and 36. Locking off the two because that's a prime number. Then I can do six and six. Okay, and then I'm going to do two and three for both. Okay, and then locking off the 2 and 3 because they are prime numbers. Okay, so locking those ones off, guys. So, I'm going to have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which I can write it in a more... A formal way of 2 cubed times 3 squared or 2 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of 2 okay doesn't matter which order I actually write in this year I can write it as 3 squared times 2 cubed okay this is question number 8 guys find the lowest common multiple of this now one way of doing this is looking at the times tables okay and seeing what the first number is another way is to find the prime factors and see what's common in both okay so 45 is 9 and 5 locking off that 5 because it's a prime number and then I'm going to have 3 and 3 Locking off the threes because they are prime numbers. So 45 is 3 squared times 5. 63 is 9 and 7. Locking off the 7. Okay. And then that's going to be 3, 3. Okay. So it's looking at the numbers that are in both essentially. Okay. So I've got 3 times 3 actually, so that's actually common in both, okay, and I've got a 5 and a 7, so if I do 3 times 3, okay, times 5 times 7, that will give me the lowest number, okay, in this, so 3, three times 3 is 9, 9 times 5 is 45, 45 times 7 or oh, five sevens are thirty-five. Seven fours are twenty-eight, and the three is thirty-one. Okay, and that I believe would be your answer. Okay, and the reason why we have included like a five and a seven is because I can't just times one number by five and ignore the seven. I've got to multiply it. 
by essentially everything in both trees and that will give me the lowest common multiple okay which is that number there right guys we are now looking at year six fractions timesing and dividing okay a carton contains two thirds liter of sorry two, 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 two thirds of a liter of milk how much milk is in four cartons okay so two thirds times four so whenever I multiply a fraction by a whole number, I just times the numerator by the whole number and keep the denominator the same. So it's eight over three, or I can write it as two and two thirds. Yeah, it it it, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and that okay, but that's probably a bit a bit more visual of pointing around such here. So I think either answer would be correct. Okay. This is question number two, guys. Work out a half times three quarters. When I times fractions, all I do is just times the top numbers together and the bottom numbers together, and that's it. One times three is three, and two times four is eight. Okay. Right, guys, the next question. One, one and three quarters times three. So... Uh, I can use these images to help me, okay? So, I'm going to change this into an improper fraction. So, 4 times 1 is 4, add 3 is 7, so I get 7 quarters. And again, times get 7 times 3 is 21, and then I get 21 quarters, which is equal to 5 and a quarter as a mixed number, Okay. So that's my answer for that question, guys. Okay, so I hope it's making sense so far. Question number four. Work out the missing values. Ten times a third. Again, so times in the whole number by the numerator, I get ten thirds. Ten times two is twenty. Okay, this one's a bit more trickier. So I've, I've got to actually change this into an improper fraction first. Nine times seven is sixty-three. And seven is going to be seventy. So it's 70 out of 9. So 10 times what is 70? Well, 10 times 7. Remember that the whole number is times by the numerator and the denominator just stays the same. Okay, it doesn't change. 10 times 1 fifth is equal to 2 because times by a fifth is the same as dividing by 5. So I get the answer of 2. Sorry, guys. <coughs> This is question number five. A bag contains 400, red count, uh, 400 counters. A quarter of them are red. Three-eighths of them are blue. So how many more blue counters than red counters are there? Well, a quarter means dividing it by four. So 400 divided by four is 100, okay? So remember that a quarter of them, again, means splitting it into four equal pieces. Oops, should be a one there. Okay, I apologise for that, guys. Okay, so dividing it by four. Three eighths, okay, so divide by the bottom times by the top. So 400 divided by eight is 50 times three is 150. Okay, so I've divided... So this one is divided by 8, and then I times by 5. Okay, so how many blue counters are there? The red counters, well, 150 take away 100 is 50, guys. Okay. Right, guys, this is question number six. Okay, use a diagram to convince me that a third, splitting it into two, is equal to a sixth. Okay, so what I'm doing here actually is I'm splitting, okay, this third into a half, okay? So I'm splitting this fraction, okay, so I'm, I'm splitting each third of the year into a half. Now, if you look at how many pieces I've got in total, okay, I've got six pieces. So, and obviously, I, I end up splitting actually a one part out of the third, actually. So, 
that's how I get, okay, one sake, the key. So fraction, to divide a fraction scheme means that I flip this one and I change it to a times. Okay, so I'll show you here, guys. What is a half divided by five? Well, again, so it's what I call the KFC method or the keep flip change method. So keep the first fraction here, flip the second so it's one fifth and then change it to a times. So a half divided by five, okay, one times one is one and two times five is ten. Okay, so that's my answer for that question. Okay. This is the next question, 2 thirds divided by 4. Well, again, keep the first fraction the same, flip the second, and then change it to a times. 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 4 is 12. Now, this one I can actually simplify if you want to 1 sixth. Okay. This is question number seven, guys. Okay, so I've got some bars here. So the whole thing actually is 144, and I, and I want to work out what four sixth is. Well, 144, divide that by six, that will tell me what one bar is. So let's just go ahead actually and work that out. How many six is going to one? Well, that's zero. How many six is going to 14? That's two remainder two. Two, six, and 24 is going to be four. So each bar is worth 24, guys. So we've got 24 times four, okay, which is equal to 96, okay? 24, add 24, add 24, add 24 will give me 96, okay? for this part okay now here it is actually a bit sneaky so is it i think it's looking at the same question here so what you can do here is you will just look here actually okay so these two equal 24 and then this will equal to a half of 24 which is 12 okay so 24 so each small bar is equal to 12 for this one okay 12 plus 12 plus 12 or 24 plus 12 is 36 guys okay this is question number eight guys from monday to wednesday max rose two and a fifth kilometers each day from thursday to saturday max rose four three tenths kilometers each day how far does he row in total from monday to saturday okay so i've got to do two and one fifth add four and one third so this is actually adding mixed numbers which is slightly more trickier i'm going to add the whole numbers together first and then add my fractions and then combine my answer two plus four is equal to six okay so i've got six whole then i'm going to work out one fifth plus three tenth now when i add fractions i've got to have the same denominator i.e the same bottom number so we're going to change one fifth into two out of ten by times the top and bottom bottom by two so this is now going to become two tenths i can now add my top numbers together and keep the bottom one the same i get five tenths which is equal to a half okay so combining this all together six plus a half is six and a half kilometers This is question number nine, guys. Becky spends three fifths of her money. She has sixty pound left. How much did she start with? Okay. So she has a two fifths there. Okay, so two fifths is equal to sixty pounds. We and we want to work out what five fifths is or a whole. Okay. Well four fifths would be 120 pounds okay and then adding on a fifth which is going to be half of that it's going to be 30 pounds so it's 150 pounds okay so 
So three fifths of 150, 150 divided by five is 30. Divided by three, uh, yeah, so that, that doesn't matter for that question. Okay, this is question number four, 10 guys. Two fifths of a quarter of a number is equal to eight. What is that number? Well, if I just go ahead and just time this together, I get 2 out of 20, which is equal to 1 tenth. So 1 tenth of a number is equal to 8. Okay, so the opposite would be timesing it by 10. Okay, the opposite of a tenth of something is to times it by 10. So the answer is equal to 80. Okay. Right, guys, so this one is the year, year 62, so it's fraction and addition, so we're looking at fraction, okay, addition and subtraction, okay, so we are getting there, guys, yeah, so it is actually like a fairly long video, actually, so feel free to dip in, in and out of this, okay, so simplify six ninths, well, dividing top and bottom by three, I get two thirds, okay, simplify five and three sixths, well, I can't simplify the five, actually, but I can simplify three sixths into one half, so I get five and a half. Okay, question two, guys. Max says that 30 out of 50 in its simplest form is 15 out of 25. Is Max correct? Well, he's halved it, which is a good start. But I can go a bit further and divide top and bottom by five. So I get three fifths. Okay. For that question, so the answer is no. This is question number three, guys. What number is that arrow pointing to? Well, if I look here, it's going up in point twos. So it's 5.2. Okay, next question. Draw an arrow to show three quarters less than A. So I'm taking off 0 0.75, okay? So let's just work it out here. Zero take five, I can't do it, so I'm going to have to borrow. That becomes a one, that becomes a ten. Ten take away five is five. Boy, there, that becomes a four. That becomes a one. Eleven take away seven is four. And four take away zero is four. So it's 4.45, 4 4.245. So it's going to be here. Okay, for that question. What number is one and a half greater than A? One and a half is 1.5. So add that to 5.2. So zero add nothing is nothing. Five add two is seven. And one add five is six. So it's 6.7246. Sorry, two. Oh, sorry, guys. So he's going to actually in 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 not point two five. Sorry. So I think I've actually made a mistake here. So that would actually be a zero. That actually is a so four point four, which would be here actually, roughly. Okay. And then this one's actually a 5 there, so it's 6.75, which is going to be here. Okay. Right, guys, next question. Question number four. Take the statements that are true. 3 fifths is greater than 3 sevenths. That's true, yes. 1 and 3 eighths is less than 7 eighths. Well, that's going to be 8 times 1 is 8, and the 3, so that's, that's incorrect, okay? Two quarters is it two eighths equal to that? That's correct, yes. And four times two is eight, and the one that's nine quarters, not eleven quarters. So that's wrong. Okay, right, guys. Question number five. Write the fractions in order, starting from the smallest to largest. Okay, I may use the number line to help us. Okay, I know that one sixteenth is going to be the smallest. Okay, straight away. Now let's change all these fractions into sixteenths. So 4 times 4 is 16. 
3 times 4 is 12, okay? 5 times 2 is 16, so I'm going to get 10 sixteenths. Double that, double that, I get 6 sixteenths. Okay, so now I can go straight away and work out all my answers. So it's going to be 3 eighths, then 5 eighths, then 3 quarters. So it's just a coincidence that it was written in that order, okay? I was looking at equivalent fractions, okay? This is question number six, guys. So calculate two thirds plus one ninth. Well, again, adding my fractions, changing the denominators. So two thirds is equal to six ninths. Six ninths plus one ninth is equal to seven ninths. Okay, so hopefully it's making sense so far. Okay. Right, guys, next question. Okay, so let's just work out this bit. Okay, so changing that into twelfths. Let's just double the first fraction so we get ten twelfths. Okay, and then times that by three. Ten twelfths minus nine twelfths is one twelfth. Okay, so the answer for that question is one twelfth. This one here, so adding mixed numbers. Two plus one is three, and three fifths plus a half. Well, let's put it over ten. A half is equal to five tenths. I'm going to have six tenths, which is equal to eleven tenths, which is one and one tenth. So when I add my answers, I get four and one tenth. Okay, because that's equal to one and one tenth if you think about it. And then adding the three. Oops, one and one tenth. Sorry, not one and one eleventh. And I get four and one tenth. Okay. Question number seven. Draw the arrows from each fraction to show its position on a number line. Okay, so that's going to be equal to dividing top and bottom by 33. That's going to equal to one. That's going to equal to one quarter. So that one's going to go there. Okay, a half. It's going to be this one here. And a quarter is going to be that one there. Okay. This is question number eight, guys. Okay. So Jenny reads a quarter of her book on Monday. She reads a third of her book on Tuesday. On Wednesday, she, she reads the rest of the book. What fraction of the book she did she read on Wednesday? Well, a quarter plus a third, guys. Okay. Is three times one is three. Add the four. So three plus four, divide that by 12, okay, is 7 twelfths, okay, take this away from the whole number 1, and I get the answer to be 5 twelfths, okay, for that question. Right guys, this is question number 9, okay, so let's just delete that actually, and now we've actually worked this part out, okay, so three friends share a chocolate bar. Laura gets three ninths, Phil gets four twelfths, and Matt gets seven twenty ones. Do they share the bar equally? Explain your answer. Well three ninths is equal to one third if I simplify dividing top and bottom by three. Four twelfths is also one third because if I half it and then half it again I get one third. Seven and one actually, yeah. if, I, if I divide top and bottom by seven, I get one third. So the answer is yes, because they are all equivalent fractions to one third. Okay. This is question number 10, guys. A circle has an area of this. Max puts a triangle in the circle. The triangle has the area of this. What fraction of the area is left? Well, I'm going to do 18 and 1 sixth, subtract 5 and 2 thirds. So let's just change it into an improper fraction. 3 times 5 is 15, add the 2 is 17. Okay, so 18 times 6. Well, let's just work it out here. 8 times 6 is 48, and 6 times 1 is 6, and the 4 is 108, plus the 1 is 109, okay, subtracting fractions, so just change this one so it's out of 6, so just double the top and bottom, I get 34, 109 minus 34, 
out of six. So 109 take away 34. Well, nine take away four is five. Zero take away three, I can't do, so I'm gonna have to borrow that one. 10 take away three is seven. So it's 75 out of six centimeters squared. And I can simplify that if I want, but I'm not gonna worry like, a lot about simplifying actually yeah, for our purpose, okay? And I can change that into a mixed number as well. Right, guys, we are on to year eight, the Cartesian plane. Okay, so we've got this one and then one more, and then we will be finished for this package, okay, and this video. Year eight, the Cartesian plane. This is question number one. Plot the points on the grid, zero, two. So it's zero, two, so that's going to be A. B is minus three, two, so minus three. This one is three minus two. Okay. Okay. Write down the coordinates of the point that is the fourth quadrant. Now, to me, it looks like it's going to be here, isn't it? Okay. So that's going to be minus five, minus two. Okay, next question, guys. The coordinate pairs of 0, 2 and minus 3, 2 lie on the same horizontal line. Write down the equation of this line. Well, the y coordinate is fixed at 2. The x coordinate changes. So y is equal to 2 is that, okay? Okay, next question. Draw the line x equals minus 1. Well, that's just like a horizontal, uh, sorry, a vertical line. It looks like that, okay, using a ruler. So it's a vertical line going through negative 1. Okay, this is question number 2, guys. Complete the table of values for y is equal to 2x plus 3. Okay, so subbing in x is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. And x is 1, 2 times 2 is, sorry, 2 times 1 is 2, add the 3 is 5. When x is negative 2, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus the 3 is negative 1. Now, drawing our points here, we're going to have minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 0, 3, 1, 5, and two seven. Okay, using the ruler, guys. I'm gonna just draw a straight line, and it looks something like that. Okay, that's the line. Y is equal to two x plus three. So it's got a gradient of two, which is the steepness of the line, and it crosses the y-axis at positive three, which is called my y-intercept. Okay, so straight lines are always in the form y is equal to mx plus c. This is question number three, guys. Which of the following lines is parallel to the x-axis? So parallel means it has the same gradient as the line y equals zero. Well, y equals seven certainly does. That one doesn't, that one doesn't, and that one doesn't, okay? Because it will have a solution, okay, if I solve these equations, okay, respectively. Write the equation of a line that is parallel to the y-axis. Well, that's going to be x is equal to 7, if we're looking at this one. But it's just x equals a number, okay? Because the y-axis is the line x equals 0, guys. Okay. Right, guys, this is question number 4. Match the lines to the correct equation. Okay, so equation B... Okay, across 1, up 2, and it goes to the point 2. So equation B is 3x plus 2. Okay, equation A, I know that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be y equals minus x. Okay, y equals x is equation D, and that leaves equation C, which is correct, y equals x plus 2. Okay, which two of these lines are parallel? So it has the same gradient. That's going to be A and c okay because the coefficient in front of the x is just one okay circle the point that does not lie on the line y equals x well that's going to be that one there okay 
This is question number five, guys. Which of the lines is the steepest? Okay, so it has to have the biggest number in front of the X. That's going to be this one. Okay. I suppose this one actually, uh, it, it would also actually count, but it's like a negative grade actually, yeah, but it's the steepest. So yeah, so it has to just be that one actually. Ever. Okay. So, so the last few questions now for this one. Yeah. Write down an equation of a straight line that has a gradient of 12. Yeah. Well, it's going to be in the form y equals mx plus c. Yeah. So y is equal to just, let's just say, 12x. Okay, that's it. Nothing more. Okay, nice and simple. Question number six, guys. Find the midpoint of the line segment joining this. Issue. So the midpoint is adding adding the x coordinates together and then halving it. Three plus six is nine. Divided by two is four point five. Two plus ten is twelve. Divide that by two, I get six. So it's four and a half and six. Okay. This is question number seven, guys. Which of the graphs are non-linear? So that's quadratics or cubics okay so this one's non-linear this one is non-linear and the others are linear okay right guys this is the last section actually for today's video so i, I do appreciate it. it's been like a fairly long video actually for today year rate number sense okay question one okay so round 654 to the nearest 10 okay we are able to use a number line here that's closer to 650 than it is to 660 so the answer is 650 654 to one significant figure so that's the first non-zero number and then the rest are zeros we're looking at that five actually so that actually rounds this six up to a seven so it's just 700 okay round 76.38 to the nearest integer integer means whole number so it's going to be 76 okay Round 76.38 to one decimal place. We're looking at the 8 there. That rounds it up. So 76.4, guys. Okay. This is question number 2, guys. Alex has calculated 6.3 times 2.8 using column method. By rounding each number to the nearest integer show that Alex's answer must be incorrect well that's approximately six times three roughly which is approximate yeah yeah obviously three times a year is equal to 18 this year but the answer should be 17.64 and not 176.4 okay so the answer should be 17.64 because that's closer to 18 this is question number three, guys. Whitney buys a sandwich for two ninety nine, a chocolate bar for seventy five p, and a drink for one pound fifteen. How much does she pay for it all together? Well, let's actually just work it out here. So two point nine nine plus one pound fifteen plus zero point seven five. Okay, I might not have much space here, but I'll try and put my answers on the side. Five plus five is ten, and the nine is nineteen. So nine. Carry the one. I'll just, I'll just put the one here. Okay. Nine plus one is ten. Eleven. That's going to be eighteen. Carry the one. Two plus three. Sorry. Two, so two. Two plus one is three. And the three. So it's four pound eighty nine pence. So she pays with a five pound note. How much change does she get? Well, eleven pence or zero point one one. Okay. Because eighty nine plus eleven is a hundred. Okay, so five pounds take away four pound eighty nine is eleven pence. Right, guys, this is question number four. Daisy's fifth birthday is on the twenty third of January. Her friend's fifth birthday is on February the eighth. How many days older is Daisy than her friend? Well, the twenty third actually. So, if I add seven to that, I get thirty. Okay, so it's still like the same day of the week actually. Yeah. Okay, so that's adding seven. I'm now going to add one, so I get 31st, okay, of oh, January, and then I'm going to add one again, and I get to the first, and then I'm going to add six, okay, 
So if I add 7, add 1, add 1, add 6, it will give me the total number of days. Well, 7 add 6 is 13, 14, 15. So the answer is equal to 15. Okay, next question, guys. So we're going to use the greater than, less than, or equal to. Okay, 300 millimeters is actually bigger than this because that's equal to 50 millimeters if I convert it or conversely that's equal to 30 centimeters okay either way okay so four kilograms minus 250 here is 3.75 kilograms okay five hundred Add 150. Well, that's going to give me 3.65, yeah, which is less than 3.75. So 3.65, okay, kilograms for that one. So that one is actually bigger than, okay. Right, guys, okay. This is question number six. Mo has tickets for a film that starts at 4.45. He has also booked a table for a restaurant for 19.30. The film lasts for an hour and 57 minutes. It takes 25 minutes to walk from the cinema to the restaurant. Will he make it in time? Okay, so let's just add two hours this year. So if I add two hours this year and then take off three minutes, I get 18.45. But then I've got, I've got to take off three minutes obviously because obviously yeah it's obviously 50 minutes yeah and not two hours so it's 18.42 so 18.42 add 25 actually is going to be less than or yeah so it's, it's not going to reach 90.30 years so 18.42 if i add 18 minutes i get to 1900 and then if i add seven minutes after Okay, that's going to be 18 minutes. And then if I add 7 minutes, I'm going to get 19.07. So he, he will make the restaurant in time much here because he, he, he's got to arrive there by 7.30. So that's obviously before that time. So the answer is yes, he will make it. Okay, so he will have 23 minutes to spare actually. Okay, if I'm being a bit nitpicky. This is question number seven. The value of the square root of seven one here is between which two integers? Well, eight squared is sixty-four, and nine squared is eighty-one. So it's in between eight and nine. Okay. Integers means whole numbers, guys. This is question number eight. A bag of oranges weighs 1.5 kilograms to the nearest 100 grams. Complete the error interval to show the bag where X is the weight of the orange. Okay, so it can take... Oops, I've made a mistake here. Actually. So it can take 1.45, okay, as the lowest, which is what I call my lower bound. Okay, and it can and it can be anything specifically less than 1.55. It's not equal to 1.55 actually. If you look at the symbol actually, so it's it's actually less than. So the actual answer will always be 1.49999 actually. But rather than write that actually, it's just easy to sorry 1.549 actually. Yeah, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> So the actual answer here is 1.549 actually, but obviously rather than writing 4999 actually, yeah, it's just easier to write it as strictly less than 1.55, because it can't go equal actually that actually, so it's got to be less than that. Okay. Right guys, next question. So put this here in size order actually here from smallest to largest. Okay. So this one actually, so let's just change it to centimetres actually squared, guys, because I, I find that a bit easier. So metres centimetres, yeah, times about 100 actually, but obviously I've got times about 100 squared, because I've got a power of 2 there. So I'm times this year by, essentially by 10,000, okay, for this one here. 
So it's going to be one, two, three, four. Okay, this one. So I normally times by ten from sorry, I normally yeah. Sorry, divide by ten actually. Okay, so I'm going to be dividing by 10 squared because I've got a little squared there. So I'm dividing by the scale factor squared. Okay, and here I'm multiplying by the scale factor squared because meters to centimeters, I times it by 100. But because it's got a squared there, I'm going to square the scale factor. And here, so dividing this by 100, okay, so taking off going to be 5 times 10 to the 4, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, so putting this in size order, that's number 1, that's number 2, and that's number 3, okay, and that's how I write my numbers here, so 1, 2, and 3 is from smallest to biggest, and that is the end of today's video so thank you so much for making it to the end guys cheers for watching